Governor, <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. Welcome to the Budget Committee. Uh, I want to ask my question uh, and frame it uh, from my standpoint as a mom who's raising three young children in the pub attending the public schools in Florida, and also as someone who served uh, for six years of uh, my tenure in the legislature with you uh, <coughs> as governor. And um, the one-time monies that you just referenced that were created to lure five or six research institutes from California. And, and I do find some irony here that you're, you're here today under the guise of removing barriers to free enterprise. Um, while in office, you recall, you spearheaded a deal to use more than $600 million in public money to lure the Scripps Research Institute to build the facility in Florida. Now, as a state legislator at the time, I remember being called into special session of the legislature so that we could pass a one-time $310 million gift to the Scripps Research Institute from federal stimulus monies that were allocated from Florida. In fact, Palm Beach County anteed up about $269 million to pay for land and buildings for Scripps. At the time, you were quoted as saying, there is no better way to spend the one-time federal economic stimulus money than by investing in a project that spurs targeted economic growth. Now, I was on the Appropriations Committee and remember distinctly questioning your staff and you about the importance of accountability with that investment. You insisted that wasn't necessary. I remember distinctly attempting through amendments that we could ensure that the, if the promised jobs were not created, that Scripps would have to pay some of the funds back to the state. You opposed that and said it wasn't necessary. In spite of our strong reservations about this gift with no accountability at all to a private entity, Democrats, including me, voted for the Scripps bill. Mm -hmm. I voted for the Scripps bill. I know bill. you did. So we tried it your way. Let me describe the result. As of 2010, Scripps Florida employed 377 people. That's $1.32 million per employee. The operation is projected to employ 545 people by 2014. That's over $900,000 per employee. In fact, Governor Bush, estimates of the Scripps Florida deal and the promises of massive job creation were massively overblown. Depending on which proponent you were listening to, it would create 2,800 jo direct jobs after 15 years. But as of the end of year seven, Scripps Florida employed just 377 people. Estimated spin-off jobs in other companies were largely overblown. From 6,500 at the time to 40 or 50,000 were predicted. Quoting directly from the Florida Office of Program Policy Analysis and Government Accountability, in fiscal year 2004, Scripps had only supported the creation of a projected 615 full-time and part-time equivalents, and in fiscal year 07, it had supported the creation of just an estimated 1,327 jobs. In 2003, the year the Scripps giveaway passed in Florida, there was a $40 million cut for state universities and the end of enrollment in the Healthy Kids and Children's Health Insurance Program. Given the employment numbers, which were far lower than projected, was it a good decision to fund and private enterprise ahead of education and health care? How many low-income children could have had health insurance or students could have received tuition assistance at the equivalent of $1.32 million per employee? This same policy is writ large in the Romney-Ryan budget plan, which doubles down on a policy that benefits large private corporations and the wealthiest, most fortunate Americans and leaves the middle class and working families to fend for themselves. Florida's had one of the worst high school graduation rates in the country, and roughly half of Florida's graduates require remediation when they get to college. Yet we're paying for a company dependent on importing highly educated and trained employees to relocate rather than investing in education, which is the main draw for good employers. Just this year, Florida's forced universities to cut $300 million from their reserves and operating budget. Is the budget. gentlelady going to give the gentleman time to respond? I, I'm, I'm trying. If you, uh, you just took some seconds off my time. So if you would restore it, I'd appreciate it. All because the economic policies originally established by you, Governor, gave away billions of dollars of, in taxes that could have gone to education, infrastructure, and other important investments. So here's my question. Is this, quoting from your testimony this morning, it, because you said, that is why my best advice to you is to perform a fundamental cost-benefit reconsideration of many programs in the federal budget. You said, please know that no matter your good intentions, the government creates unintended consequences when it acts. You go on to ask, what would a cost-benefit analysis show? And later, in reference to your example of the supposed 49 different federal job training programs, you ask, are they being measured on the success with which they get people retrained? Good question. So how do you think that if we apply your advice to the Scripps deal, that a cost-benefit analysis of $1.32 million of state funds per job would hold up? Given that students in our state graduate unprepared for college-level work, tens of thousands of low-income children languish on state waiting lists for affordable child care, how could you justify giving away $600 million in public funding with no accountability to a private company? 
Again, welcome to the Budget Committee, Governor Bush. <laughs> you have nine seconds to great, respond. Great, great seeing you, um, <laughs> We'll let you go over your time. So uh, the Scripps Research Institute is not a corporation. It's not a for-profit company. It is a premier uh, not-for-profit research institute that does world-class research. Uh, the accountability that you voted for, I'm glad that you voted for it. You weren't against it before you were for it. You were for it before you're against it now, I'm happy that we had your vote, was, was based on the money would go out based on the 575 jobs that, that are in the process or probably have already been completed. So this is an idea to spur innovation, to spur um, additional activity. It gets hit by the, the downturn in the economy, but there has been significantly higher numbers of jobs, spinoff jobs or jobs created because of Scripps and Burnham and Tory Pines and other uh, institutes, and we've increased, at least during my tenure, I haven't followed the budget of the state since I left, but we increased funding for research for our universities as well. And so in the life science sector, Florida's gone from being in the back of the pack to aspiring to top tier status. I would say we're probably, in terms of research spending, uh, probably number five or number four. And 10 years ago, we were probably 25 or even higher than that. So I think th from that perspective, it ought to be reviewed. I completely agree with that. There ought to be an analysis done, but I think uh, for something that's work in progress, I would say it's been a success. And I would add that had we not spent this one-time money on these long-term things, the money would have been spent. And it would have been spent creating huge recurring gaps that many other states have funded, had, had to deal with that would have ended up creating higher taxes for Floridians that would have hurt our economy uh, and made, made our business climate worse. No, Mr. Chairman, no, I don't the, want to... The times are generally easy. I know, Mr. Chairman. I'm not going to respond. I would just ask... Uh, Unanimous consent to include something in the record? Is that yes. what you're asking for? Yes, okay. and, and, and let me just say what it is so that I can get it included. It's an article from the Sun Sentinel that shows that Palm Beach County's this, $100 million bio... The general lady asked for unanimous consent to include a Sun Sentinel article in the record. ...should return to its farming roots. So, because it was such a debacle. Without objection, the, Thank you. the general lady's article will be included in the record. Governor Bush, did you were you finished with your um, answer? I'm finished. It's a joy to be here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Amash. I know. It's amazing. 